Thanks for joining me on the You Drive You Network. My name is Kenny Long, and today I'll be talking about QuickBooks for Trucking. In previous videos, I talked about the accounts you need to use for your bookkeeping system, and I also helped set up a QuickBooks online subscription. In this episode, we'll talk about using those accounts in QuickBooks, making everything match up, how you go about doing that, as well as creating your very first invoice. So first, to get started, log into your QuickBooks account. When you first log into QuickBooks Online, you start on this screen. This is your dashboard. It's a quick snapshot and overview of the health of your company, including your income, expenses, and your profit and loss, even your bank account balances. Before we can enter anything to get started, we need to first make sure that our accounts in this system match with our bookkeeping system. Click the link here in the video to see the video that I did about the accounts that you need to have set up for bookkeeping. To check your chart of accounts, go to the top right of the screen, select the gear icon, move over under your company, select chart of accounts. Your chart of account lists all of your accounts in a spreadsheet format. Some of these accounts you may not need, such as, for example, inventory asset. Inventory asset, since you are a service business, you won't have inventory, so let's deactivate that one. Scroll, go to the right side of the screen, select the down arrow, and select make inactive. Are you sure you want to inactivate this? Select yes. It's now deactivated. And you can see it's still listed, but it says deleted. There are some accounts that you may not think you need, but they're built into the system and you will need them in the future. For example, uncategorized asset. Go to the right. Let's select make inactive. Yes, let's inactivate it. You can't delete this account because it is part of the online banking feature. So there are built-in protections to make sure you don't delete anything that you will need in the future. We'll explain uncategorized asset or uncategorized undeposited funds in a future video. Another possible option is to just change the name of some things. For example, job supplies. Categorizes supplies and materials. So let's go to the down arrow, select edit. It's an expense, detail type supplies and materials, but let's just change it to supplies since our, our bookkeeping system, we just have supplies. Description, supplies you bought to complete a job. We can change that to small tools and miscellaneous. Save and close. You may also need to make a new account. So for example, let's make a new one by going to the top right of the screen. Select new. Let's make an income account. Select Income. We're a trucking company. We're not selling products. We're moving freight, and that's a service. Select, select Service. Name, let's just call it Trucking Income. Description, Income from Hauling Freight. Save and Close. So now we have Trucking Income listed here. When you're creating your invoices, you can categorize things as detailed as you would like. So you could just say trucking income. But what exactly did you do? Did you haul the freight? So is it a line haul charge? Or maybe it's detention? Well, detention is also part of your trucking income. So how would we categorize that? Let's go to new. Let's call it line haul. We'll go to service income. And we'll call this one line haul. And we'll call it flat rate. Description, we'll just call it the same. But it's a sub-account of trucking income. Save and close. Now, when you look at your chart of accounts, you'll see trucking income, slightly indented line haul flat rate. So later on, when you run the reports, which you can see on the right side, anything that you do under line haul flat rate or make more uh, categories such as detention, truck order not used, layover, any of those could be underneath the trucking income and your totals for trucking income will be all of them combined, or you can look up the individuals to see a report. So for example, if you wanted to see just what you did for detention, you could run a report just on detention, and it would be separated from the rest of your trucking income. So go through and make sure that all of your income and expense categories are detailed according to and match up with what you have listed in your bookkeeping system from the other video that I did previously. Now let's go back and enter an invoice. There are two ways to do that. The first is to just select the new button 
here on your dashboard. By selecting new, scroll down to invoice under customers, and it will populate this blank invoice. Let me exit out of this one to show you the other way to get to this. From the dashboard again, on the left column, scroll down to invoicing. It opens up a sub menu, and you can go to overview. This shows you the invoices that you've created in the past. We haven't done any yet, but if we had, you would see unpaid invoices, invoices that are not due yet, invoices that have been paid in the last 30 days, deposited and not deposited. Those will go under those undeposited funds that we showed in the accounts list earlier. We'll talk about that in a future video. But for now, we don't have anything here. Let's create our first invoice. So go to the top of the screen and click Invoices column. Now select Send Your First Invoice. We're back to the blank invoice screen. To start, let's select a new customer. If you are an owner operator, your customer is the carrier that you are leased to. If you are a carrier, your customer might be different on every load, so it's the broker that you're billing or the direct customer if you have them. If you're a broker, the shipper receiver that is paying you to arrange the trucks, that's your customer. You can select that here. You can enter add new. You can enter a basic name if you're in a hurry to make an invoice or select details and it will show the entire list and enter all the details of your customer, address, phone number, and so forth. What's important is make sure the company name and the email are listed because QuickBooks Online will send invoices for you and it will do it easily by email. You don't necessarily have to print them on paper and send them by mail. So the invoice will be emailed to the email that is listed for your customer. We'll cancel out of that. I've already entered my brokerage, Patriot Star Logistics, so we will enter that. Broker at Patriot Star Trucks is the email list. It's already there. You can select send later, so you could create this invoice now. Say it's a Friday afternoon, you create it, but you want to send it on Monday, we'll send it later. But in this case, we'll send it today. Something that's important to pay attention to is your terms. This is whatever terms you've negotiated with your customer. So if you are an owner operator leased to a carrier that gets paid every week, you would put or a net seven. If you're a broker, and you have net 60, 30, and so forth days to pay, negotiated with your customer, you can put that here. It will pre-populate the date based on what you put in for your terms. Add your own terms here by selecting Add New. For this case, we're billing a broker, so we'll say it's a net 30. Now we need to enter the product or service. So select product or service. We haven't made an invoice yet, so there are no products or services listed. So let's select Add New. We'll be providing trucking services, not an inventory issue, so select Service. Let's call this Line Haul Flat Rate. The category, I've already got that listed. Description, and this is what will show on your invoice, so call it whatever you want your customers to see. I like to call it line haul flat rate across the board. Now, under income account, you can match this up to your account that you created before. So we'll make that line haul flat rate, save and close. And as you can see, your description that you entered is here. Your quantity, you can do this however you'd like. You can make this the miles you ran versus the rate per mile. So let's say it was a 1,000 mile trip versus $1.60 a mile. It will automatically do the math for you. Or maybe it was one truckload at the $2,500 that you had pre-negotiated. However you want to show that, you can, you can add that. Maybe there was detention on this load so let's add another line. Product and service, add new, service, same thing, we'll call it detention, and your income account. Well, we don't have that listed yet because we didn't put that in, so let's go to the top, and that brings us back to our account information so we can enter that account here as well. So QuickBooks has a lot of workarounds built in to make it easier for you, even if you 
don't necessarily have everything done up front. So it's an income account. It's a service. This one is detention. Description, detention. You could even separate these to detention at shipper or detention at receiver. Again, this one is also a sub account. So let's make this a sub account of trucking income, save and close. And it's pre populated here, save and close. Description, detention at shipper. So you can edit those here as well. You don't have to do it through the widget that shows up. And on this one, maybe we had two hours of detention at $50 an hour, $100. And QuickBooks does the math for you. We can save and send at the bottom right of the screen. We can just save and start creating a new one. So if we had a list of invoices, we're maybe doing this at the end of the week and catching up all of our invoicing, or just save and close. We'll try this one, save and send. This brings up this send email box. This is the email that your customer will get from, for example, Sample Trucking Company, which is the company that we created, to broker at patriotstartrucks.com. That's my brokerage email. Invoice 101 from Sample Trucking Company. And you can edit these. these this is actually the email that they will see. I'm happy with this invoice, so let's just send it. Now, if I drag my Outlook box over to the screen, you can see this is the email that I just got. It came through almost instantly. It comes with the email bo uh, body, which shows very specifically exactly what we had typed in with information about the payment due. This is the entire invoice listed in the email. but if I choose to, as the customer, I can also open the invoice and get the PDF version that I could print out. And this is how it shows. Detention at shipper, line haul flat rate. Some of the things that you might want to do is add more detail to the description. Now when we go back to our home screen, you can see that we have an invoice that we've created. Let's go to the invoicing overview. We can see that we have a $2,600 invoice, not due yet, and we can see who it's from and when it's due. We even see, click into it and see a timeline of exactly when the invoice was created, when we sent it, and as we make edits or changes to this invoice, such as receive payment and so forth, it will add to this timeline. So it's very specific, and it helps you track your receivables. So let's close out of this invoice, and now we've created our very first invoice. Now that you know how to enter an invoice, the next step would be receiving the funds against that invoice. We'll talk about that in a future video. But you can start to see now how the flow works within QuickBooks to really use it to manage your business. It's a super powerful tool, and I'm sure that as you get used to using it, you'll get better and better, and it'll be more and more efficient for you. So until then, remember, dream big, aim high, strategize your plan. You have to earn your success because nobody deserves it if you don't earn it because only you drive you.